14 facts about Noah every Jew and Noahide should know. 1. He was the tenth generation from Adam. We are introduced to Noah in the list of genealogy of the descendants of Seth, third son of Adam and Eve. The sages tell us that this long wait demonstrates God's abundant patience. He watched successfully degenerating generations, yet he lovingly waited for them to mend their ways. 2. His name means respite. Although English speakers call him Noah, his Hebrew name is Noah, pronounced Noah, related to the word Nakath. The name can be translated as rest, gentleness, and pleasure. Scripture tells us that his father Lamech chose the name foreseeing that he will give us rest from our work and from the toil of our hands from the ground. How so? Rashi tells us that Noah introduced the use of plows and other farming implements, which made working the land much easier. Additionally, the earth stopped producing as many brambles and thorns in his time. Alternatively, the sages of the Midrash tell us that Noah was the first to have dexterous fingers which made all kinds of intricate work possible before Noah, the human hand, was more web-like. 3. He was chosen by God to survive the great flood. Noah lived at a time when the people had begun to sin, stealing greedily from one another and treating each other unjustly. As a result, God decided to bring a great flood wiping out the world's population, starting again with only Noah, his wife, and their progeny. 4. The sages have mixed feelings towards him. Torah describes Noah as a righteous man perfect in his generation. Some understand this to mean that even surrounded by such a low-class people, he maintained his goodness. Others, however, interpret it to mean that his goodness was only relative to those around him. Had he lived in the time of Abraham, who was truly righteous, he would have been nothing special. 5. He built the ark. God commanded Noah to build a teba, a giant three-story sea-level vessel, often translated as ark, in which to survive the flood. The top floor was for Noah and his family. The middle story was for the animals, and the lower level was for refuse. 6. He was the first zookeeper. When the time came for the floodwaters to begin, animals and birds streamed towards the ark, two of each species, one male and one female. But from the species deemed pure or kosher came seven pairs each. For the duration of the flood, Noah and his sons were busy caring for the animals. Miraculously, harmony generally reigned, and fierce prey animals did not attack the others. This was evocative of the time of the future redemption when the wolf will dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall crouch with the kid. 7. He worked hard. It took a full year for the floodwaters to subside allowing Noah and his family to leave the ark. For that entire time, they were busy tending to their charges to the point that Noah began to spit up blood. On one occasion, he was late feeding the lion and was attacked or bitten by the hungry cat. 8. Noah and his wife had three sons. Noah's three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, or Japheth, was, as well as his three daughters-in-law, all survived the flood with Noah and his wife. Shem, the eldest, was the keeper of the divine tradition passed down from generation to generation. Together with his great-grandson, Eber, he founded a Beit Midrash study house where these traditions were studied and transmitted. 9. He was the first to be allowed to eat meat. When they finally exited the ark, Noah built an altar upon which he offered some of the pure animals as sacrifices to God. At that moment, God allowed Noah and his descendants to eat meat, something that had not been permitted until then. 
10, God promised him never to flood the world again. God assured Noah that he and his children should procreate, promising that he would never again flood the earth. As a sign of his promise, God placed the rainbow among the clouds, an eternal reminder of the deal he had struck with all of life on the earth. 11. He planted the vineyard and became inebriated. It later happened that Noah planted a vineyard from which he made wine and became drunk. His two elder sons learned what had happened and tried to maintain their father's dignity. Ham, however, did not treat him properly, so Noah cursed Ham's descendants and blessed Shem and Japheth. 12. He lived for 950 years. The flood began in the 600th year of Noah's life, and he lived for another 350 years after it ended, passing away in the year 2006 from creation. Doing the math, one realizes that he overlapped for nearly 60 years with Abraham, who was born in the year 1948 from creation. 13. He is one of six for whom a Torah portion is named. The Torah has five books of Moses, is divided into 54 portions, each of which has a unique one or two word name, along with one for Sarah, and one for Jethro, and one for Korah, and for the king of Moab, and for the zealous Phoenix. Noach is one of six Torah portions named for a person. The portion spans Genesis chapter 6 verse 9 all the way to chapter 11 verse 43 and ends shortly after introducing Abraham who was born ten generations after Noah. 14. His soul was reincarnated as Moses. The Torah describes Noah as a righteous man who walked with God. The Kabbalists point out that while he was a holy person who was in harmony with his Creator, no such energy existed between him and his fellow man. This was why, despite knowing that the flood was coming, Noah did not succeed in inspiring even one person outside of his immediate family to return to God. His soul was therefore reincarnated as Moses, the consummate guide and leader who devoted his life to inspiring his people to mend their ways and return to God.